I just want to knock off Penn State and Iowa. And I want to win the NCAA. I think everybody wants to be the best, but I think we just want it a little bit more. I think that this is the group of guys that can bring another title back to Columbus. It's certainly the best class, I would say, that I've ever been a part of or seen. I thought there was gonna be. Can you get this? This is what I come. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You getting this? My first practice at Ohio State was was rough. <laughs> it was rough. I came in thinking I was ready for college wrestling, and I wasn't. Got my butt kicked a little bit. The good news for us, I think, right now, is that we have this great class. A lot of them could step in, but we're letting them marinate, right? We don't need them to right now. They can just kind of fester in this tough environment. You know, they're not gonna compete at the national championships as long as everyone stays healthy, right? We've got a whole year and five months. So they're still 17 months away to compete under pressure in a high pressure situation and allow their brain to connect all the skills they're learning and deal with how hard you've got to fight and deal with the struggles of one hour weigh-ins and deal with just being a college student on your own, right? Be, being a man, right? Growing into a man. I started making progress. It wasn't something that, like, just like one day I was like, oh, boom. It was like, oh, I got a, a takedown on this guy today, or I beat this guy today. So it's like super small things, you know, just going over the stuff with the coaches and applying it to practice, and then it's working, so you're like, wow. You kind of see it a little bit at a time. It's like super small things are adding up. Just looking back at like my wrestling from my senior year to now, it's completely different wrestling. We're really in a good place that right now, the only true freshman in this class that we're gonna use is Jesse Mendez. He's as ready as anybody that I've recruited in my 30 years coming in as a freshman. And, and I think what's so unique is he's so hungry for stepping in. Step. Go. I feel like I've jumped five or six levels. Like, just looking back from when I got here in the summer till now, it's like, I, don't know, I almost feel like a new wrestler, so I'm excited to show it off. Jesse Mendez is extremely competent in many areas that you need to be. So we like where he is, and we're glad that he's the only guy that we got to use right now. What's that up there? Uh, Tess is like, uh, like your speed, your explosiveness, I guess. I don't really get it. He just said I can't go lower than this number, so I won't go lower than that number. At the first day of college practice, man, it was it was exciting. I think you saw a few clips in the video of me, you know, not winning some positions. At that point, I was kind of awestruck. You know, I'm like, I'm I'm at Ohio State. I'm here. I've been committed for whatever a year and a half now. It was awesome. I was so just so happy to be here. So since we saw you in June, Feldman had a fantastic training period. And then recently, recently he was injured. He's extremely bummed, we're extremely bummed. You know, when you lose someone like Nick for a while, it hurts Nick's development, right, obviously. And it certainly hurts all of his partner's development. I think it was the first round of the rest loss. We noticed something was kind of really off and we went and got and checked out. We went and got the MRI and got the X-ray. The X-ray came back clean, so I was really excited. But then the uh, MRI came back and I remember I was with Tom and when it came to see Sam and he said, all right, we got there's a little bit of an issue with your, with your spine. We met with a spine specialist. He said the only real way to fix it was surgery, so that's what we decided to do. When it comes to the neck surgery, you know, like, it sounds like a it, big deal, and it, and it is. Leading up to the surgery, I was never really down in the dumps about it. I was excited. I was like, if this is going to get me back on the mat, then let's do it, like, whatever it's going to take. So before the surgery, I was feeling good. Immediately afterward, I felt pretty just crappy physically because I had was in a stupid neck brace. I hated that thing. But for the first few weeks after the surgery, it was it was rough. I was I was a little bit of a tough patch emotionally. I was in a place where it's like I come here every day, twice a day, and I get to watch everybody else do what I love to do, like what I live for, and I can't do it. And at that point, all I could see was I've got months of this. How am I going to get through this? How am I just going to sit here every day and, and watch these guys? I struggled big time. I found that 
you know, reading and writing helped me a lot to get my emotional state back in check. And you know, now I'm, I'm really feeling great. I've learned that uh, you know, everything's not in my hands. You know, sometimes it's just actually you just can't control everything, and that's okay. I've also learned that that patience is just as important as everything else in life, and sometimes even better because. Right now, like the amount of like hunger I feel and, and desire I feel to get back on the mat is something I, I didn't have before. And I think that could be something, something really special and really powerful for me to for me when I come back. Nick Buzak is the wild thing. We get to wrestle together twice a week in the morning, and I love it. He is slightly undisciplined in his wrestling because he can get away with murder, right? And now, you know, you're not going to get away with murder as much. So it's really honing on the things you're great at. Nick's, uh, he wrestles kind of wild, so I, you know, for him, it's looking for growth and, and trying to, you know, see if we can, see if he can do the things that we've been working on. So my coaches say I'm a little bit of a wild wrestler and a little too sporadic and do dumb things a lot, but <laughs> making improvements early on, it was like a lot of small things, like getting into legs and then finishing the correct way. I need to like fine tune a lot of small things I probably should have fine tuned whenever I was in high school, but I feel myself coming along pretty well. You know, he's so explosive and powerful and he kind of creates things out of nothing sometimes and we want him to create things out of the fundamentals of the sport more for the most part for nick to be really elite it's not going to be a wrestling related thing that stops him from being really elite you know he's 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 got a lot of the gifts that you need it'll just be things outside you know i mean nick nick was obviously highly recruited and one of the things that connected us was, was just some of the sufferings that he's experienced as a brother and what I've experienced as a father. So I could relate to mom and dad, could relate to Nick, and we just really had open conversations about things outside of wrestling. So my little brother, he passed away of cancer. His name was Greco Roman Mazakas. That's why I put the beanie on and I kind of tell myself, hey, if my brother can smile through chemotherapy, I can beat someone up on a wrestling mat. After I compete and I get a big win, I put on a beanie that belonged to my brother Greco Roman Bazakis, and he had cancer whenever I turned nine, and uh, he passed away whenever I was 14, 13-ish. And uh, I would put on that beanie to symbolize like a big moment for me and a moment I want him there with me, and I feel like he's closer whenever I put it on. So it's like my little, he's here with me moment. Before like Greco got sick, uh, wrestling was just kind of like a sport to us. My dad wanted us to do good. He was a wrestler in high school and college. He wrestled at Clemson. And it was kind of just something that my dad wanted us to do, kind of get the grit, toughen up. And then when he got sick, it took a weird turn. It turned into like, this is my life now. This is what I need to work for. Wrestling kind of became my drug. I was always watching it. I was always working out. I was always wrestling. And I just felt like I could like let out my emotions on the mat and it, that's what I've always done. And I felt really good wrestling. It became my thing. And uh, wrestling really helped me get over a lot of uh, the grief and uh, the stuff I had to go through with my brother. Greco just kind of drove me and gave me a drive to be a better person and a wrestler. Off to the bus, first tournament. Go Bucks, baby. You don't have a smoothie? No, I forgot to order one. <laughs> I forgot to put them on order. But I should have been grandfathered in from the smoothie bowls last year. She knew my order. Right, I should have been grandfathered. He got some pot belly sandwich, Jaggers. That's a good spot. Steve, what do you think comes? He on top of it. I'd give you a bite, but uh, I, I, I was no, mooching. No, no, no. I, got, I got a little bit of everybody. So I'd give you a bite, but it's an NCAA violation. <laughs> Nah, I don't want to look at it. I'm good on it. I had it up in there. All right, please. All right, see you up there. So Michigan State Open, we go to the, to the Michigan State Open every year. For the most part, I have an early season open tournament. And I think it gives you an early sense of watching guys compete match after match. There's good competition up there. You get a really good feel of your team. Uh, it's an early weigh-in. We've watched the guys through preseason for uh, almost eight weeks. So now it's time to see them compete and we're just trying to learn, right? For the most part, it's a learning opportunity for us and for them. Just the move with the ball. Tell her every time, that tell her ball. It's unbeatable. 
thing I like the most is being around my teammates. It's fun when you are super close to your teammates and you know everybody's laughing and joking, but when it comes time to practice, everybody gets serious and goes to work. I feel like a part of the family here at Ohio State. Wrestlers, we all hang out together and uh, yeah, I feel really at home here. This recruiting class is special, a lot of good guys. When you come in, you think they're just another wrestler, right? But these guys are good guys. Me, Feldman, Buzakis, Jesse, Seth, you know, all the guys are just good people. I think we're on a good path here right now too. Everybody's working really hard. They want to get in here. They don't have to be told. I think we got a good culture. Everybody does their part. You know, when everybody has common goals, it's easier to succeed together. And we all have pretty common goals and what we want to achieve here in our four or five years. So, Whether it's beginning of the year, end of the year, whether it's the Michigan State Open, or the, you know, there, there are certain non-negotiables, right, that typically they develop. We're looking for people to wrestle fearlessly. They're just all the little things that go into winning big time matches. So we're gonna get tested, it's a great event. It's gonna be a great event here. So, you know, these guys are really hungry. I mean, they've been beating each other up really since June. And, you know, preseason was tough and filled with a lot of hard work and they're sick and tired of fighting each other. And let's see whose actions stand behind their beliefs. Cannot wait for Saturday. Wins was crazy. So we had the scales out. I checked my weight probably like 30 minutes before, hopped on the scale. Oh, I'm 0.3 under, I'm fine. I'm gonna go sit down, hang out, chat with the guys. And then right as Wayans was about to start, I was like, something's telling me I should check my weight again. And I hop back on the scale and, oh great, I'm 0.1 over, 0.2. Throwing all my stuff, I have Logan uh, tell me, start going, start going. I started sprinting back and forth. I actually got the sweat going. I was hitting sprints in the back room, just like, oh, am I gonna make weight? Oh, my dad's gonna kill me. Oh, coach is gonna kill me. Oh, man. I was so nervous. If I, if I didn't make weight, I thought I was never gonna be invited back to Ohio State. I thought I was getting kicked off my first tournament. <laughs> I ended up making weight, it was fine. You know, Jesse's the only one that's, his red shirt is being compromised in the first weekend of the year. 133, you're going to Michigan State Open, it's one of the elite, you know, weights there are, I think. Two returning All-Americans, but we've seen enough to trust that no matter what happens, this guy has the mindset and the work ethic that can get the job done.
had this date circled on his calendar. The second it went on our schedule, it was on his mind, right? He knew what the field could look like, and he's just really mature, man, for a freshman. I mean, that's, I don't know what else to say. He's, the way he wrestles, the way he understands positions that are happening, and then situations that you know, goes out of bounds. Like some people could like let their mind go when, when something bad, like oh I didn't finish, or a stalemate on a good shot, out of bounds. He doesn't care. He just wrestles the next thing, and that's just poise. So yeah, I mean that, Jesse has that already at, as a kid, you know. <laughs> My name's Luke Geog, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and I'm a freshman here at Ohio State. Luke Geog, of all the freshmen, I would say he's the biggest surprise, because we knew he was good, but he looks really, really good. How would I describe my style? Fast pace, high tempo. I'm always looking to score that next point, whether it's on our feet, on bottom, on top, you know, just trying to control the match and, you know, really keep the pace up. That's kind of one of my strong suits is just high pace, running guys out of gas. Coming into college, I was recruited as a 184. Came in about 185, so I was, you know, around the weight. The goal was to wrestle 84 at the beginning. Got closer to season, was getting up to like 97, 98, 99, and I was getting ready to cut down 84, and I got to like mid 90s, like low 90s, and I was like, you know, I can make it, but I'm not gonna feel good, you know? So ultimately, I had a conversation with the coaches, decided I was gonna go up to 97, feel good, so I'm excited for it. So let my body grow and just rest where I'm at. So. I was a late bloomer in high school. I started at 138, and I worked my way up to 182 slash 189 my senior year, and now I'm a 197 pounder. And the late bloomer is real in the Geog family. Luke Geog is a tremendous athlete, tremendous speed, super excited about him. He, he really believes strongly that he's a 97 pounder. Now we have Shoemate there as well. The best guy deserves to be on the mat, so let's find out who that is. with me and Shoemate, yeah, I think it was kind of making a statement in the room a little bit about what weight you want to go. You know, I had went up to 97, so, you know, we're, it was kind of almost like a little mini wrestle off, to be honest, to see who's going to go down. You know, I just went out to wrestle like I was going to wrestle with someone from any other school, you know, just do what I do. That's a G-Og. We, we, we brawl. We go back and forth. We don't leave anything on the table. So it's 2-1. And then that was kind of the end of the first period. The second period went down, got out. Took him down again. And then rode him for the last second inning. Third period, just he chose feet and just kind of just hand five had five. 
I slipped up in the hand fight, got behind, and he took two beautiful shots. Pretty much how the match went. Two good takedowns and no good takedowns. After wrestling the teammate, I feel like once you get the shower out of the way after the match, you're back to being buddies, chopping it up. There's no hard feelings attached to it. I mean, get beat, you get beat. What are you going to do? It's not awkward because, you know, everybody wants what's best for everyone. And, you know, obviously we can, you know, make lineup changes down the road if needed. And, you know, I think just, you know, everybody needs to, everybody needs to do what's best for them. So. One a mini, one a mini. The weight cut didn't affect me at all. Going through my matches, I, I can kind of visualize most of them. My first match, I remember just getting on a kid. He wasn't that strong. He just fell into the cradle I always hit in high school. So I was just like, all right, let's finish this quick. Did that, pinned him. The next kid, he was from Wisconsin. He was kind of a runner, but that was, uh, I think I pinned him in a half. Logan has been trying to drill into me, halves and uh, arm bars, so I've been working on that a lot. My next match, uh, a kid also from Wisconsin, really nice kid, he was on the Greco World team. He, he was a scrapper, he was a strong kid, but I think the, my best technique and my best riding came out in that match. I controlled the whole match, I felt really good. I felt, I didn't gas out, I felt very comfortable with where I was at. Then my finals match, I was wrestling a kid, he was really strong. He took me down early and I was like, okay, I hit my little fat man roll that for some reason works. I got a reversal, he tried to stand up. I just took his neck and brought it to his knee and uh, cradled him. My first tournament that I won, I know it's not like the NCAAs or Worlds or Nationals, but it's a, it's a really big moment for me. I mean, I felt really happy with my performance. I put my beanie on for that one. It was, it was just a milestone for me. Look at the hat. My little brother passed away of cancer when I was 14, and this was his hat. So I put it on anytime I have a big win. Since this is my first college match or tournament, uh, I felt like this is a very important moment for me, so I wanted to throw it on for the last one. From Mazakis, we saw his strength and his athletic ability, uh, and some good control out there, some good discipline. I figured out like my little uh, setups and everything. Coaches have taken me in every uh, Tuesday and uh, Thursday for it's just private, one-on-one, -on -one, get to work, figure out where I need to wrestle, where I need to work from. I felt very powerful, very strong. I mean, I had uh, one of the best top games of my entire career today, so I feel pretty good about myself. But still, a few things I need to fix. So Jesse in the finals will match up against Lucas Bird, Illinois. Tremendous amount of respect for him. There'll be all eyes on that mat when they come here because everybody wants to see the one of the freshman phenoms versus one of the best kids in the whole tournament. So we'll see what happens. Get over a minute. Ride him, Jess. You can ride him. Watch the cartwheels. First cart move wheels. here, first move. Be strong. 
strong. He's stingy here. Short set. Jesse, we just saw great match management with the perfect combination of aggression and patience. You know, Bird's a crafty wrestler, and he's been in a lot of big matches, so it's good overall. Especially this early in the season, I, I want matches like that. So he's a tough competitor, and uh, you know we went to war. I want to wrestle the top guys, and you know that's one of the top guys right there. So you, know, you got to have confidence in yourself to be able to do the things you set out to do. So that's what I'm doing. When you recruit them, you think, yeah, this is a really good class, right? But but they got to do it. Today is a positive check toward hey, the actions might align with what we believe, right? So uh, good start. The Virginia Tech's going to be a fun duel, mate. They. Uh, they always have a solid team. Uh, it's going to be a good duel. They got a good team. So looking forward to Friday night. Should be rocking in Cavelli. Right here with the purple door. This is us. I always stay fresh, white tees, you know. They be going after it. We're going to take this one on the chin, and it sucks right now. 